When we think of the great innovations of humanity, we often think of them as the product of an individual's ability to solve a problem. That is, we can thank the lone geniuses of society for human progress. But I think that when we investigate what's happening in history, it's baloney. In fact, what I want to argue in this video is that the lone genius myth is more than an inaccurate reading of history. It's actually a harmful myth and its acceptance has damaged humanity in a pretty deep way. So firstly, what are some examples of the lone genius myth? Well, apparently Van Gogh once told his brother Theo when discussing his paintings that you will have been as much their creator as I because the two of us are making them together. Einstein struggled for years with his theory of relativity. He then got his friend Michel Besso to help him with the mathematics to get past a mental block that had prevented him from solving the theory. Also, let's think about the extent to which Isaac Newton was influenced by his predecessors. His idea of gravity was based on their work and he even built upon their theories to devise his own. This doesn't mean that what he created wasn't original, but rather that he came upon a concept that had already existed and then he took it to its next logical conclusion. Steve Jobs was undoubtedly one of the great innovators of his time, but did he create the iPhone alone? He definitely didn't. We have to consider the work that Jonathan Ive, Steve Wozniak, and Ronald Wayne played in bringing the product to market. And then there's the fact that the iPhone brought together three key things that had already been invented. The camera, mobile phone, and the portable music player. In fact, Andrew Hargardon, a business professor at UC Davis, notes that if we really want a full understanding of innovation in society, then we need to look beyond those who we perceive to be the sole creators of a product or service and instead examine those people whose contributions are more often ignored in our textbooks and histories. So these are some well-known examples of innovation that we usually credit to the single lone genius. Now I want to focus on the stories of activism in history that we often tell. Let's think about Rosa Parks the black lady who very bravely sat at the front of the bus when only whites were allowed to sit there. She's undoubtedly a hero, but did you know that she didn't do this on the spur of the moment? She was actually part of a highly organized group that had planned this act for months. It was important that Rosa did this, but it was just as important that many simultaneous acts were coordinated at the same time. Now let's now think about an experience that we can all relate to, the workplace. When you go to work, you're probably giving your best effort to fulfilling a role that fits into a bigger whole. You may be the one coordinating the work of others, or it could be that your work is being fit into the bigger picture of what's being done by others. Yet in the workplace, I think we've all come across people in management positions who take all the credit of the ideas and the work done by others. They simply don't have the perspective to see that what they do is just as dependent on the work of someone else as that someone else is dependent on them. I think in this case, it feels natural for the managers to assume that it's their special creative powers that launch the new products or bring into play the new things for the company. It feels natural because there's this belief in society that it's the lone genius or the heroic activism or the brilliant artist that causes change. But what if this isn't the case? What if it's the case that we all contribute to the products and services of others, but by just a little bit so that we're not even aware that we exist in society as important contributors. I think there's something to this idea. The lone genius myth is a problem not only for telling an inaccurate story of how we got here. It's also a problem because it contributes to the story that we tell of who we are. We end up believing that we're living a life independent of people around us. We feel like the challenges we're up against are ours alone to solve. We fail to recognize that we live in a network of relationships with people who are crucial to our success 
or our failure. We fail to see that we're not isolated individuals, but members of a society and ecosystem that shapes the way we think and we act.